Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems. As usually, my favorite theorems, very biased point of view. Well, today's topic are, well, the Bormian rings or basically why they don't exist. In some sense, I'm going to explain why the standard optical illusion, the Bormian rings are really an optical illusion. We'll, we'll see. Well, um, strictly speaking, the Bormian rings are not an optical illusion, but anyway, we will see. Um, before I start a disclaimer, so this is the title of the video and my main problem while I prepared this uh, video is that I'm going to tell you about a very classical theorem, but sadly this classical theorem doesn't have a real well, well-established name. Actually, it doesn't have any name at all as far as I'm aware. So I just needed to come up with something and I decided to call it uh, the Borromean impossibility theorem. I don't know, my apologies, we'll see. Um, before I start, so um, this theorem, as I said, is pretty classical, relatively classical, so probably well-known for a long time. The first proof appeared in the 80s. Um, but I got aware of it while reading a, the very nice book, which is called uh, Proof from the Book, which is linked in the description. It's a very readable uh, book. And it's, it, it basically collects a few very nice theorems and very slick proofs of those theorems. Um, as far as I'm aware, there is no open access version of that book. But anyway, if you want to have a look, um, link, linked in the description. So that's my main source for today. Uh, as well as other sources, which I also link down in the description. Anyway, so let's get started. So um, the Bormean rings is a very, very simple idea. Um, I will show you Mathematica in a second. Um, and they appear everywhere kind of, well, maybe not everywhere, but they appear throughout culture and nature. Um, throughout culture is, well, like symbols like this, you have three components, you have a blue one in this case, here also have a blue one, um, you have a red one, here you finally also have a red one, and here you have an or uh, orange, a yellow one, and on this side it's just colored differently, whatever. But basically the point is they are, they are linked in a funny way, and you can't really see it right now, but they are linked in a way uh, such that whenever I remove one of them, no matter which one, let's stay, with, let's stay on this side, whenever I remove the blue one, uh, the other two get unlinked, so you can pull them apart. Whenever I remove the red one, the other two get unlinked. I pull the, can pull them apart. Whenever I remove the uh, yellow one, same thing, right? Uh, the other gets unlinked, you can pull them apart. And um, the, so this is this picture and it goes back to, well, some ancient um, like symbols, maybe not this one, uh, but anyway. So it's very well known in, in arts and culture. Um, and surprisingly, also link is in the description, also in nature, apparently there are molecules, that's the thing on the right, which, well, there are certainly molecules that not, that's kind of well known for a long time, and how the molecules are not at plays a crucial role for their chemical behavior. So I was, uh, as I said, a bit surprised that I, uh, well, that when I learned that actually Bormian molecules exist, as I said, link is in the description if you want to take a look. But now let's have a look at Mathematica to really understand what I'm saying here, namely what are Borromean rings actually. So here's Mathematica, link in the description. And the idea is pretty easy. You have this arrangement of three circles. You can see here, so the yellow one or orange one, whatever, the blue one and the uh, green one. And whenever you remove any of them, so I can remove this one here, the right hand one, for example. Um, so you remove it and you can see that the other two, they pull apart. Right? I remove this one and they clearly pull apart. Okay. If I remove the top one, then the other two pull apart. If I remove the bottom one, then the other two pull apart. And that's kind of the property that defines Bormian rings or kind of Bormian rings, kind of a general. So you have a certain number of, of circles, basically, they're interlaced in a nice way, and they're interlaced in such a way that whenever you move one of them, the whole thing falls apart because it's not really knotted anymore. Right, so that's basically the definition of a Bormian ring, if you want. And the whole thing falls apart. And 
if you were watching very carefully, then you have, would have spotted something in my mathematical demonstration. I will come back to that later. So cliffhanger. Anyway, um, the generalization of this idea, uh, they're usually called Brunian rings or Brunian rings after uh, a mathematician whose, whose name was Brun. Um, um, and the, the idea is the same. So you, you can construct those with any number of components. Here's illustration with uh, six components and on the, well, so this is the, the link or the ring itself. And here I removed the, the blue one and now you can just, just unknot it by, by, by taking, let's say, this red component, you shrink this part in, the red component pulls out. You do the same with a, with a, a, a yellow component, and you do the same with a blue component, and so on. And this picture basically is a proof that those bromine ring type things exist for any number of components, right? Because, well, what was so special about six here? Nothing was really special about six here. Anyway, so these are called Brunian links or Brumean rings, whatever, for a higher number of components, for a bigger number of components. And the question, the theorem I'm talking about or going to talk about, uh, I would like to address is actually uh, in what sense, well, here you can definitely see that these are just not perfect circles, they are distorted. So in what sense are actually those components of a Brumean, uh, link in what sense are they actually really perfect circles, right? So if you've seen the thumbnail, or this is also linked, of course, in the description of this video, then you have this, this classical picture of these Burmian rings, and it really looks like they are perfect circles just interlaced in, the, in this fashion I just told you about. And the question is whether this is actually true or whether this is actually an optical illusion. So can you build those Brumean rings, or in more general, those Brunian links, out of um, out of perfect circles. You definitely can for n equals one. Well, for n equals one, so n was the number of components. You just have one circle. Yeah, it's it's not interlaced with anything. Yeah, sure, <laughs> very good. Um, you can also do it. So this is my donut picture for n equals two. This is a so-called Hopf link in a very nice donut demonstration. So you definitely can interlace the Hopf link is using two perfect circles. Just take your fingers, you can do it with your fingers. And the question is, um, can you do it for, for more than two components? And this is exactly the theorem where I wasn't sure what the name is, um, but a very nice theorem actually, it's a no-go theorem. It says, no, you can't. So um, in other words, so, well, the formal statement is something like a link consisting of n greater two disjoint perfect circles has to be trivial. Well, of course, I could draw those just n disjoint perfect circles just right next to one another. So that's that's boring. That's trivial. But I can't interlace them. That's basically what 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 um, what this theorem is saying. Um, in other words, those rings, links, whatever, they 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 cannot be made out of perfect circles. They are always distorted. And as I said, if you have paid a little bit attention, or you just go back to the video. Um, in the Mathematica demonstration, you can also see it here, then those weren't really perfect circles. There's this kind of bended circle objects. And that's something you need to do to actually make it work. So the thumbnail picture is actually a lie. It doesn't, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. You can't do that with circles. Uh, it's, well, it's really a no-go theorem, which goes back to, well, it, it's surprisingly uh, recent, so 1987 for such a theorem is surprisingly recent. Um, they prove something more general, Friedman and Skora, but this is this is also part of, of their uh, paper. The paper is linked in the description. Um, yeah, so I could close the video here, just telling you, okay, my thumbnail picture was a lie. You can't do that. Uh, you, you can do it with your fingers with two, but you can't do it beyond two, basically. The only thing I haven't told you about is whether those Borromean rings are actually trivial or not. And that's how I would like to, um, to end my, my video. They are not trivial, obviously they are not, right? They're interlaced. Um, but how do you prove that? And there's a very nice proof idea. It's called, you could choose a coloring of the link, link in the description. So either it's called a fox coloring or it's a tricoloring, something like that. And it's the following idea, you take some, diagram like this one 
which is of course a diagram of the Borromean link. Um, and you have two rules how crossings can look like. So in my case, you have three colors. I have a, a green color, I have a blue color and a red color. So uh, any crossing has to be colored and you have two options for any crossing. You can either color it monochrome, well, like completely green or all three colors have to appear. And this is called this is non-trivial coloring. For example, green, um, red and blue, and they have to appear in this fashion that the strand that goes over just gets one color and the other one is split into two colors. And it turns out that it's that's not very hard. It's very hard to show. It's you just check whatever the randomizer moves, if you know what randomizer moves are, that the numbering of three colorings is an invariant of links. And of course, if I just have three disjoint circles, I can just call out one, let's say blue, I can just call out one red, and I can just call out one uh, green, and any kind of permutation of those colors. So I have uh, definitely three cubed options to color three disjoint links, right? I have three colors, so I have, and they're completely independent. I have no crossings at all. I don't have to worry about this condition. So I can just, well, have my 27 options to color them. And it turns out that I don't have 27 options for the Borromean ring, uh, which is a nice exercise. Um, I, I partially solved it here. So all I did here is I started by coloring some random part of the, um, of the diagram in, in a random color. And then I just tried to fill it up and I got stuck. And basically, if you think about it a little bit, um, what you see right now is a proof that you can't do it. If you, if you well, <laughs> if you write it down formally. But basically, it's a, it's a very finite problem. You just check that you can't do it. In particular, this thing has only, so the Borromean rings have only the, the monochrome colorings. Uh, so you don't have 27, you have a fewer number, so they can't be trivial. A very nice, uh, uh, very short argument that the Borromean rings are actually trivial. Anyway, let me wrap up. So I have the theorem. I just decided to give a strange name because it doesn't really have a name anyway, um, which is just saying that the classical picture of the Borromean rings is an optical illusion. You can't just link those, um, those, those links, rings, whatever, using perfect circles. And this just doesn't work um, and period. So it's, it's actually a lie. So the picture that you usually see about Permian rings is actually a lie. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.